We know there are many choices in Internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the Internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Hi, everyone, and welcome to The Book Beat. I'm Jean Noel Bassior, and we have a fabulous show planned for you today. We have John Lowe on as our guest expert, and he is going to tell you everything you want to know about ebook formatting, but we're afraid to ask. And believe me, a lot of people are afraid to ask. It's just like stop some cold when they find out what they have to do you know, deal with with formatting, but John is really great at explaining this whole thing. And then we have um, Lane Wong, who is a novelist, and she has written a book called Shanghai Love, and a very unusual plot. Um, It's a a, a novel about a love affair between a Chinese herbalist and a Jewish refugee doctor fleeing Nazi Germany. So an unlikely love affair. Um, it's got a lot of praise on Amazon. And we have Marcy Javriel, and she is a vitality expert. And she will be joining us. She has written an amazing book that really summarizes everything she has learned in many, many years of helping people heal themselves. Um, she's um, just an amazing expert in so many aspects of self-healing. And uh, I'm really excited about her new book. So, Before we bring John on the show, I want to just talk for a minute about some book news. And the kind of interesting thing that is going on with a possible lawsuit that may be forming against Author Solutions. Now, this is not a reality yet, but if you've had a kind of a bad experience with a POD, that's a print-on-demand company, um... And under this author solutions umbrella, we have iUniverse, Trafford, Ex Libra, Ex Libris rather, Incubook, Work Clay. There's a lot of them under that. But what's really interesting about this aspect of the book business is that as self-publishing has become the choice of many new authors, all of these POD companies have formed, taking a lot of business away from mainstream publishers. So a few years ago, Penguin which, as you probably know, is a long-standing mainstream publisher, thought, well, how are we going to get a little piece of this action? Because our business is falling apart. And so what they decided to do was to buy Author Solutions, which they did for $115 million. And so along with Author Solutions came Author House, iUniverse, the whole gang, uh, Ex Libris, and all those companies I just mentioned. And... Then the complaints started coming in, deceptive practices, uh, getting authors to purchase uh, very expensive promotional uh, services that they often were kind of worthless, uh, failing to pay royalties. There were a whole bunch of complaints, including spamming you, because, boy, I'll I'll tell you, go and check out some of these self publishing companies and you will be seeing them forever 24 7 on your computer every time you search google every time you want to order something from a restaurant i mean they're they're there every place so a lot of complaints started coming in so there is um a uh, there's a law firm in new york that's doing a little bit of research and uh, if you go to their website Um, you might want to just have a look at the form that's there to fill out and see if anything uh, uh, applies to you there. It's uh, www.gslawny, which stands for New York, so it's gslawny.com. And, uh, you know, put your two cents in if this is something that's been been bugging you. Now, you know, of course, there's a lot of great self-publishing companies, and, and this is not intending to knock them. But if you have been frustrated by some of the poor work that comes out of some of them, by some of the overpricing, by some of the spamming, uh, spamming rather, then I would say there might be help around the corner. So you might want to check this out. So, John, uh, John Lowe, are you there? Yes, I am. Good, good. I think I'll be able to hear you in just a second, a little louder. Um, So thank you so much for agreeing to be with us today. Okay, no problem. And I was so appreciative of your taking time with me on the phone a few months ago because, as you know, I had so many questions myself about 
the formatting, the ebook formatting aspect of self-publishing. And I want to just give people your background. This, this is what you specialize in, but you're a retired military and commercial pilot, right? Yeah, that is correct. So I have to ask you, how, what, what, what made you go into self-publishing and, and uh, ebook formatting? How did, how did that happen? Well, actually, it started out as a hobby. Um, my father had written a, a number of books, and they'd, they'd gone out of print, and the rights had come back to him. And so I uh, started helping him uh, with the uh, ebook formatting, starting with uh, Smashwords, and uh, it just kept growing and growing and growing, and it just grew into a business. Wow. Wow. And, you know, this is the place where so many people get confused, because when you write an ebook, you, you've got a Word document in most cases, or some other word processing program like Pages, but let's say you have a Microsoft Word document. And now, what does an author have to do at this point to create an ebook from that? What do you do for them? So what we do for them, um, first of all, uh, we have a form that they can fill out that gives us their information. And then they send us their book. Um, we take a look at their book to see the complexity of the formatting. Um, and then uh, we will provide a quote uh, of what it would cost, and if they accept that, then we proceed. Um, we will do all the formatting, and we guarantee our formatting. Uh, we, we format for Smashwords, uh, which is our primary focus, but Smashwords uh, uh, delivers to most of the um, major retailers, uh, Apple, Sony, uh, BNN, et cetera, et cetera, except for Amazon. So we also uh, format for uh, Amazon as well. So we'll provide a uh, file, a, a Word doc file that is formatted that the author can then take uh, and upload onto their uh, Smashwords account through their dashboard and uh, have it instantly published. So, and a couple of things here now. Um, when you say through their dashboard, now that means the author goes to Smashwords and signs up and then gets access to the Smashwords uh, uh, dashboard, right? That's correct. They have their own dashboard. Once they have an account, a, a dashboard for them is immediately created. And it's through that dashboard that they control uh, the publishing of all their books. If, if they publish more than one, there will be a list of the books and their status and uh, the number of downloads and the number of uh, purchase copies, et cetera, et cetera. And that's also where you manage the uh, uh, royalties that come in, et cetera. So it's, it's, it's called a dashboard just because that's where you control everything about your book on Smashwords. Right. But, you know, where people get so confused is like, say I, I have a, this manuscript, and then I either have to figure out how to format it myself, but it's a lot easier to get somebody who knows like you to do it, right? And then once you post that then the next step let's go over the next step so now it's formatted as an ebook and now we have all these different digital platforms right like like one for nook and one for the ipad and is that correct that's correct yes um you can uh, publish uh, directly to places like barnes and noble uh, apple um and things like that but we uh, format for smashwords like i say because it's very very simple then smashwords will distribute your book, uh, once you upload it, it converts it to uh, all the different formats that uh, there are in for ebooks. And uh, the major one, of course, is the, uh, the EPUB file. Uh, the second uh, m most important is the Mobi file, which is the, what the Kindle reads. So it uh, converts that and then it distributes your book uh, to Apple and Barnes and Noble. Now, like you said, you can uh, go there directly if that's what you like. But for a Canadian like me, I can't publish on Barnes and Noble directly. So there's all kinds of uh, headaches. So I like, I, I prefer the option of just publishing with Smashwords, which is a distributor basically. And they send my books to all the major retailers. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. And I got this from talking to you because um, let's get into a little bit of this confusion about so-called distribution. I mean, if you format my ebook for me, and then um, if I if I really don't want to deal with it myself, will you upload it to Smashwords and then to Amazon for me? No, we don't uh, do that. Uh, basically, 
we don't have access to uh, your account. See, it's through it's through your account that your book will be published. So I see. So I have to do that the, part myself, right? Yes, that's uh, part of the self-publishing uh, <laughs> experience. Um, and really, it is very simple. Uh, a lot of people try to, uh, uh, like they say, if you want, you want to how to eat an elephant, you do it one bite at a time. And, uh, you know, <laughs> some people try to figure it all out all at once. Uh, but if you once you get your, your book, you just go on to Smashwords and uh, you click publish and then you start going down the line it's all explained it's very very simple yeah yeah they, that's a great site but then once if it sounds like you can cover all your bases pretty much like you were saying between getting the moby version for kendall and then getting everything else on smashwords is there any need to have anybody else as a distributor or do you pretty much have it all covered well, you have it all covered, except for Amazon. Like I said, you have to publish on Amazon KDP yourself. Now, that's a matter of preference. Um, I like the fact that everything is there in one site, and it's all, all the payments and everything are uh, come through to just one site, and that there's one lump sum payment that comes out every quarter. Right. Now, there are some people who like much they, – they, they like much finer control, um, so they like to – you know, published directly. For instance, um, say if I want to change the uh, price on Smashwords, it's very simple. You go into your dashboard, you go into the settings, you change the price. It changes automatically on Smashwords, but it might take a few, I don't know, a week or two before it will change on, say, Barnes & Noble. Mm -hmm. So there's not that really fine control at yet. Smashwords is working, you know, always towards making the, it almost instantaneous. But at this time, you don't have that instant control. Mm -hmm. If you were published directly on Barnes & Noble, then of course you would. So mm -hmm. there's that give and take. Right. So what are some of the other things that you do as an ebook formatter for people? I actually have two questions. Some of the other things you do, and I know you do covers as well, right? That's correct. And and the other thing also, if, if you could talk about it, is what happens when you have graphics, um, I know, does that mean you need a, an ebook format matter who can deal with graphics and not everybody does? Or can you talk a little bit about that? Okay, first of all, I'll talk about the covers. Yeah. Uh, yes, we do uh, covers. And if you read anything about uh, anything from Mark Coker uh, on down uh, about marketing your, your uh, ebook. And Mark Coker, cover, I think, is Mark founded Smashwords, didn't he? That's that's correct. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. He is the founder of uh, Smashwords. Um, they advocate that your, the cover is basically your number one marketing tool because it is what everybody's going to see. Smashwords, Apple, everybody automatically loads your cover. And so to have a professionally designed cover, is, they say, is extremely important. And we, we believe that as well. So you do that as For, part as, of the formatting then? Yes. We have a, 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 a on our site, you can go to our covers. You can see what we do, and you can select what you want there. And that's um, ebooklaunch.com, right? That's correct, ebooklaunch.com. Okay. As to your question about the uh, graphics, um, yes, uh, graphics can be uh, inserted uh, if you have photos or anything like that in your book. The one thing that was, say, Smashwords is that uh, they have a limit of 10 megabytes per book to upload. So you have to be careful with the uh, number of photos or images that you have in your book. Obviously, images take up a lot of space. So an, an e-reader is kind of like a computer. Uh, so they don't want to have books that are 50 to 100 megabytes. You use up all the space on the e-reader. So Smashwords has a, a limit of uh, 10 megabytes. So you have to reduce the, the, the uh, size, the file size of each one of those images when you insert them to, to fall under that 10 megabytes. So let's say you have, you know, three or 400 images, it's probably not going to fit under that 10, 10 megabyte uh, restriction. Hmm. So that's the only thing. But yes, you can have photos uh, and images. Uh, it's, uh, that's no problem. And, and what's the price range um, of, say, from a book that has no images, that would be cheaper, right? Yeah, absolutely. When we do our quote, we look at everything from, uh, you know, the number of words to um, images, graphs, 
charts and tables because charts and tables have to be converted to images, things like that. So for us, uh, your basic novel, that's around 50,000 words. We st- it's $35. We start at $35. That's amazingly, um, it's amazingly affordable. That's yeah. wonderful. <laughs> well, we, that's, we try to, yeah, you know, that we're about empowering authors. We're not here to, uh, you were just talking about the author solutions. We certainly aren't here to, <laughs> uh, pressure sell or anything like that. We're here. We, we actually, we encourage all authors to try and do as much of the self publishing as they can. Mm-hmm. Um, and and then they can at least see what's uh, what it's all about. But most people, uh, some people don't have the time or or they don't have the know how, and we're here to help those people uh, uh, fill in the blanks where they can't do it. We're here to help them. So uh, it's thirty five dollars. Again, it's, we give them a specific quote, but it's thirty five dollars. We're usually under a hundred dollars if even even with images and stuff like that. Uh, if a, you know if it's a very complex book. It'll be somewhere in the range of uh, could be one hundred and fifty dollars, but uh, those are very complex uh, books with a lot of images, graphs, tables, a lot of uh, uh, intricate formatting. So, so that's really yeah. We try to keep really it affordable. Aff- yeah, that's really affordable. Um, what what else? What what do you find is the biggest question people ask you about getting their ebook formatted, or what is the biggest kind of I don't want to say obstacle, but what what do you, what do you run into that um, people don't expect, or what what should people know about this whole formatting thing with eBooks that they that they really don't know? Well, um, we get a lot of uh, frequently asked questions. Um, I can't think of the the, the, the most common uh, question, but we get everything from you know, do I need a you know, an ISBN with smash words, uh, you know, do I, uh, with, with the formatting, do I need to have a table of contents or what's a link table of contents or, you know, things like that. Uh, it, the number of questions we get is very, very varied. And, uh, so I can't, Right. Well, let's let's, let's clear that. that one up. Actually, that's a great one. Um, so you're talking about changing the price on Smashwords, but, but would you have to change the ISBN number every time you change the price? Or no, no, not at all. It's uh, the you do need a, a different ISBN than your print book to be on Smashwords. Uh, basically, the caretakers of the ISBNs want you to have an ISBN for your print version for your EPUB version for your Mobi version. So uh, on Smashwords, you only need one uh, ISBN on Smashwords. Mm-hmm. And let's clarify that for people. What, tell us tell us what an ISBN, and why it, it has to do with really taxes. I mean, that's how the government keeps track of, of you know, how many copies of your books sell, right? Of uh, that, I'm not... Uh, that's what I was that's told. That's different by, for every yeah. country, I guess. Yeah. I'm a Canadian, so I don't think that's how they do yeah. it here in Canada. But it might be the case in uh, yeah, the United here, States. Yeah, here it's that they do. Tag, um, that's they, they're they're tracking actually the actual sales. I mean, if they right. have to, you know, if you were audited or something, they would go to your ISBN number. But what what is the purpose in in Canada and other places of the ISBN number? Well, it's just a matter of uh, is tracking your your book and and another way of searching for your book. Mm-hmm. Um, I see. It's uh, it's not as uh, as important as a lot of authors think it is. Um, actually, Mark Coker wrote a uh, an article uh, article on one of his blogs about the ISBN. I think a lot of authors put a lot of emphasis on the ISBN in terms of having it in their book and things like that. Uh, for instance, Amazon it's optional. Hmm. You, you don't have to have an ISBN for your ebook. In Smashwords, uh, if you want your book to be distributed to Apple. Uh, Sony, I think Kobo, you must have an ISBN. Mm. But you've you've actually you, um, because I've run into people who say that uh, you do have to have one on on Amazon or uh, no, you don't. I'm looking no, at it's optional. Here. Okay, okay, good. Yeah, it's optional. Yeah. As good. far as it says on there uh, when you upload, and that may only begin because I'm a Canadian. I don't know if right. if I was uploading in in America, it might be uh, required because, like you say, the uh, the tracking, but. Um, the, the the big thing is is it's not even required inside your your ebook because even on Smashwords when you when you get your ISBN you can get a free ISBN through Smashwords and uh, it's attached to what's called in your ebook a uh, the, the metadata and that's the digital data that's attached to your book when it goes around everywhere so 
some people um, confuse uh, ebooks with print books, and they think they're exactly the same thing. Uh, and there's quite a few differences between ebooks mm-hmm. and print books. And I could go into a whole <laughs> well, actually, hour on that. <laughs> you know what? Our time has really gone quickly here. But, John, I, I really yeah. want to recommend you um, because you were somebody that was willing to talk with me and answer my questions. And I know that you don't do that for clients. I, I know that you prefer, uh, initially, I know that you prefer to be contacted by email, not by phone, correct? Okay. That's correct. Yeah. Right. And your email address is? John underscore low, that's L-O-W, at me.com. Okay. And uh, and it's ebooklaunch.com is your website, right? That's correct. And uh, yes, I'm, I'm just, but you know, you... You obviously know what you're doing, and I appreciate your your willingness to explain it to people and to make it understandable. So um, I definitely refer people to you and um, encourage anyone listening to to uh, shoot you an email first and check out your site before they you know check out other other people because I know you're good. So thank you so much for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Well, thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. Okay, so stay tuned. Um, We have Lane Wong coming up. She is a novelist. She writes for TV. She's a member of the Writers Guild. She has quite an interesting background. Um, And she's a recent convert to Judaism. And she is kind of, um, her real life is is kind of paralleling the book that she wrote uh, called Shanghai Love. So stay tuned. This is the book beat. Star Cam. You guys might know me from the red carpet, catching up with all the stars, but guess what? We're bringing the red carpet to the radio right out here on LA Talk Live. I'm going live Thursday nights at 6 p.m. We got hot topics, celebrities, and much more. We were featured on Chloe Lamar on E, Howard Stern, T.I.'s Family Hustle. You know how we do. So check it out on Thursday nights, 6 p.m. All things Hollywood, everything celebrity. Star Cam Radio. Star Cam Radio. Star Cam Radio. Oh, yeah. Follow us on Twitter at StarCam Radio. Hello, this is Angela DeJoseph. Join me Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. Pacific for the Angela DeJoseph Show. Join me as we venture into health, wealth. We're going to give you news, interviews, and entertainment. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio, Live 365, Radio Flag, TiVo Radio, and now live on Facebook. Or watch and listen directly at latalklive.com. Reality Radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Hey, hey, everybody. It's Miss R&B, and I'm inviting you to come and hang with me every Thursday night at 9 p.m. PST for Perspectives Corner with Rona Roe Bennett on America Talk Live. Hear and see interviews and live performances from some of our favorite celebrities and personalities in entertainment, sports, business, and the wellness industries. We're getting lifted and we're going deep, talking about life and empowering the champion in us all. See you there. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to The Book Beat. I'm Jean Noel Bassior. I'm here with my guest, Lane Wong. And I want to say thank you to my brother, Rick Fleischman, for this wonderful bumper music that he composed for my show. Thank you, Rick. Um, Rick's company is Visual Music, by the way. Um, so Lane Wong is a novelist and advocate who writes her characters through her own multicultural lens. And on Amazon, you've got so many comments that say beautifully written. Oh, thank you. And you're a TV writer as well, right? I mean, you're a writer. <laughs> yes, yes. I wrote for television, actually. Um, and then there was a writer strike a few years ago. And at that point, I decided to turn my 
creativity towards this novel that I've been wanting to work on for mm. such a long time. And you've never written fiction before, right? No, not a full I novel. I mean, a novel. In terms right, of a novel. right. Yes, this is my first one. Mm. What, what kind of shows did you work on before? Uh, I worked on a show called The Days, which was an ABC. They called it a dramedy, which was comedy and drama. Mm. And actually, that was shot up in Canada. And so I had the opportunity to actually go up there for three months. So it was a wonderful experience and wonderful writing experience, working very quickly mm. to get stories written and out there. And you really learn how to work under pressure, right? Yes, yes. I think that was very good training for writing a novel, actually. Mm, that's yes. That's great. So how did this, I, was this an idea that you'd had in your head for a long time, or how did you come up, why did this interest you, a Jewish doctor mm -hmm. fleeing Nazi Germany mm -hmm. to Shanghai, which was one of the few places that let Jews in, right, without yes. papers? And yes. how? But how, how did this whole scenario occur, occur to you? Well, it's um, it's interesting. I, I think it came eventually organically through my own search. One of the main character, Pei Lin, actually goes through her own personal search for identity. Uh, the Chinese culture tends to favor the the group over the individual, and I and so that's one of the themes that I use in my novel. So in my own search, there came a time where I was just looking for something that spoke to me, and I uh, ended up. Uh, going to a synagogue, just wanting to learn more about Judaism, and it and finding myself surprisingly very engaged and and very um, wanting to learn more, and so the book actually became an homage to my Asian roots, and then my eventual conversion mm. to Judaism. Was that hard to blend the the Asian and the Jewish piece culturally? That's a great question. At first, I didn't know that it actually did connect. And I suppose that began my research, and I started just trying to find some sort of connection because I was surprised myself that the two mm -hmm. came together. And then I had learned that actually, as you mentioned, that um, Shanghai had opened its doors to the Jewish refugees mm -hmm. during World War II. And so I kept looking into more material. I actually went to China. I went to the Hongqiu district where the Jewish refugees mm -hmm. actually lived. I um, also went along the Bund and also went through the Long Tangs, which is where the Chinese um, people lived. And that, with a combination of the fact that my grandfather was an herbalist, I started to form the story in my head. And Now, uh, your main character is an herbalist, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Pei Lin is the yeah. herbalist. And actually, you know, the Chinese have a lot of mythology. They believe in a lot of fate. And so what I have Pei Lin is her fate is determined actually by her grandfather, who had made choices back in his early days. Uh, he had actually sold his daughter uh, and, and regretted that so much that when his granddaughter came along, he decided to train her as an herbalist, which was unusual for women. Mm. Back in those days, right? Yes, exactly. Right. So, um, how, but how did this scenario of, of the Nazi Germany kind of plot, like this doctor, now this doctor's mm -hmm. fleeing Nazi Germany, how, how did this come to you? Like just, um, I mean, just why, that, I mean, that's, why did you set it in World War II, for example? Um, I guess a, a, a good question. First, I, I really respect the people who actually lived during that time period, mm -hmm. and I really feel like they're like the everyday heroes that we can all look back upon. And I, I suppose then my two characters are, are everyday people who get caught up into this to this big world war, and because of that, their lives are turned upside down. And so that was a t that was a period of time where I could really show the everyday person and and the influence that come and affect them in a in a very dark time during mm -hmm. mankind. Actually, that's a great. I see now that's a great setting. Like like people get swept up in these events that mm -hmm. really they didn't orchestrate, but it's it drastically changes their lives, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. And I think even today we can all look at some points in our life and think, you know, what do we have control over, what don't we have control mm -hmm. over, and what are the choices that we make because of them. Mm -hmm. And so tell us a little bit more about, without giving away <laughs> the novel, <laughs> uh -huh. what, why should I want to, what's going to make me want to read this book? What, what's some of the things that happen? Well, um, I, I combined a lot of the mythology, and so one of the things that Pei Lin has to deal with is um, back in those days, the Chinese families 
uh, used a matchmaker to match you up. Mm -hmm. And so she is matched up with the only son of a wealthy pearl farmer. However, uh, Yao, he he goes off to war in the Nanking Massacre and is killed. And so Pei Lin is wondering what's going to happen to her fate. Well, her future in-laws do, do not want her, their son to go off into the other world without being married. So she's actually married to a ghost husband. Yeah, you talk about a uh -huh. ghost wedding, right? Right, look, yes. Yeah. Yes, so. it, and they had ghost weddings back then. And so I, I did a lot of research, and and um, she's actually married to a mannequin of sorts that is crafted by the family. Wow, now is she considered married or a widow at this point? She's actually considered a married woman. Mm -hmm. And um, so she yeah. performs all the duties of the married woman that goes to live in the husband's house. Huh. And um, Wow, she's got to yes. go through all of the... the you know, the everyday, like she's pretending she's married? Kind yes, of? exactly. Wow. That's a new <laughs> exactly. angle. That's something we haven't heard about. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so it, it's very interesting that um, the afterlife and life on earth is very mm -hmm. important to the Chinese mm -hmm. in, in through time. Mm -hmm. So because of that, she she is considered a married woman. And then here comes the fact that um, she had an uncle die. And so they sent her to Shanghai to run the herbal store. And then at the same time, in Nazi Germany, uh, Henry has just graduated, becomes a doctor. And then on the night of Kristallnacht, which is the night of the broken glass, where Hitler had unleashed a lot of his um, stormtroopers, uh, Henry finds that he's got to leave rather quickly uh, before because he's, he's, his life is in danger. And so he finds the one place that would take him without a visa, as you mentioned, and that's Shanghai. Mm -hmm. I was always aware of that because in junior high school, um, I uh, went to school with Misha Dichter, who was a oh. famous pianist, and he had been born in Shanghai. Oh. Of course, he was in junior high then, uh -huh. but it was obvious he had a lot of talent. Was but I always mm -hmm. wondered about that. Why was Misha born in Shanghai? You know, and mm -hmm. his parents, of course, had fled. I later learned, but I didn't know why. So that yes. put that piece of the puzzle together for oh. me. <laughs> yes, it it seems like it's not a it's not a piece of history that a lot of people no. know about. And so, as you said, when I was doing my own soul searching and found that piece, it, it was just so mm -hmm. fascinating to me. I had to learn more. Yeah. Now, when you went back, mm -hmm. um, are there still Jews in Shanghai there in that quarter, or is that t totally changed? It's totally changed now, mm -hmm. but the synagogue where they went to, that mm -hmm. is still there, and it actually just became a, a museum really? in honor of the Jewish um, refugees who lived there. So they have preserved it? and uh, Yes, mm -hmm. yes. That's interesting. And, and it was in, when I was there, I actually met the uh, Chinese caretaker who knew the, the refugees when they were there. Really? Yes, so that was fascinating. He to, must be in his late 80s or yes, 90s, right? Yes, yes, he was quite old. He looked young, though, <laughs> which was nice. Well, yeah, she found out a secret, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what herb, you know. <laughs> so you are an herbologist? You, you've become one? I'm uh, studying to studying? be one. My grandfather actually was one, mm -hmm. and so that was part of my draw towards learning more about that. I never met him, but... Um, but I was interested in herbology, and I, like Henry, I think I could go to Palin's store and sit there for hours, and just the smells, you know, they have the bitter, the pungent, the mm -hmm. sweet, and just to, to learn that all these different things actually can help the body in a different way from Western medicine. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to say what's interesting to me, too, is like you hear, because I, I grew up here in California, but you hear different things like gansao, and you think, oh, what is that? And that's actually licorice root, mm. and it's used quite a lot in Chinese herbology. So. And it grows by the side of the road here, so yeah. licorice, <laughs> you see <laughs> yeah, it exactly. all over the place. <laughs> you never know. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Palin's, Palin's grandfather <laughs> says you never know that a weed could actually be something very valuable. What fascinates you about the Jewish religion? What do you like most about it? Well, that's a great question. There's so many things. Um, I, I remember actually my first time going to the synagogue to learn more about it, and they had asked the question, what is the most important room in a Jewish house? And I remember sitting there thinking, I'm thinking it's the kitchen, because uh, a lot of good food comes out of there. And the rabbi said, actually, it's the master bedroom. Hmm. And I thought, oh, that's so interesting. <laughs> and that's because that's all where all the love flows out into the house. Interesting. Huh. So that was one thing. The other thing is, is um, you know, the mitzvah mm -hmm. and doing good deeds. Blessing. I, yeah. Yes, blessings. There's so many things. And they honor the, the child when he turns 13, he or mm -hmm. she. Mm -hmm. So they just have so many wonderful um, 
markers in life that like the Chinese tradition. So I, I actually found it, as I said, similar. So. That is true. I see yes. that, that yeah, linking of traditions that they both mm -hmm. do that. And in the couple of minutes we have left here, mm -hmm. I want to ask you about your experience of writing your first novel. Did these characters, with some people, the characters kind of um, come to them mm -hmm. and, be, you know, tell tell you what to do as the writer uh -huh. or what what was how was that for you how did your characters e e emerge for you very much as you just mentioned I, I in fact because I was writing in a different medium I kept putting this off and as time went on they just kept getting louder in my head and just saying that they really needed to be put into their story and they needed to have their story told. So it very much was like that. And I, I would hear them, and uh, there would be times where they wouldn't do exactly what I had planned for them That's to do. That's very common. They don't. Yes. Yeah, they go off on their own track, right? <laughs> yes, they do, very much so. So, so you followed them? <laughs> yes, I had to follow them, yes. And that, especially, yeah, when I was there in China and thinking things through, and I, you know, it was like their voices were in my head, and they were telling me their stories. Mm. And they, because they were two different stories coming together, it was very interesting to, mm -hmm. to go through some of the areas and kind of hear her voice, Palin's voice, and other times hear Henry, and he's coming at it from an outsider's point of view. So it was, it was very interesting, and, and you're right. At first it was hard to think, how are you two coming together? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they helped you. Your characters helped you, didn't they, with the plot, sort of? Did they, I mean, in other words, like they, through their... Oh, yes. It was very interesting because what happened was, and I didn't know at first how they were going to get together, but I learned that Henry, who does go to a, Jew, a refugee hospital and helps, there was a shortage of medicine there. So he had to, at first he was trying to follow the rules of the hospital. Then after a while he thought, well, my my um, my core values is I really need to help people any way I can. So is there some way that the people here deal with these same diseases? So that's where he went looking. Mm. And so that's you how he like found you learned a lot. Yeah, you learned a lot from your characters. <laughs> I did, I did. I, I'm very <laughs> excited to know them. <laughs> What's your best tip? We have about a minute here. What's okay. your best tip for someone who wants to write a novel and doesn't know how to start? It's a great question. I, I think that um, really think about yourself and what it is that what journey are you on and what is it that that it's important to you what speaks to you and then go from there. It can be something historical as I, I went towards or it could be something modern and I, I often think like even though my my novel's historical it really speaks to a lot of things today with you know mixed marriages and relationships and what's going on with that so so I think it's whatever's in your heart is where you start and then start to listen to them mm -hmm. hear them talk to them interview them <laughs> right live with your characters yes. right interact with them uh-huh yeah 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 exactly mm -hmm. <laughs> excellent excellent advice oh well, thank, thank you thank you so much okay. so um let's hold up your novel okay. again this is it Shanghai Love. Yeah. Do you have a website associated with I it? I do. It's uh, lanewong.com, and Lane is spelled L-A-Y-N-E, Wong, W-O-N-G, and you can contact me there. I'd love to hear from people in any comments they might have. And go to Amazon and read what people are saying about this book. It's doing quite well, actually. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so thank you so much for being with oh, us. thank you, Jean Noel. <laughs> So coming up, we have Marcy Jibril. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I don't know if it's Jevril or Jibril. Yeah, that's. Um, and uh, she is actually going to demonstrate. I see her warming up in the studio here. She's going to demonstrate <laughs> some, <laughs> some moves that are going to make you healthier and feel better. She is a vitality expert, and we all need more vitality, right? So stay tuned to the book beat. This is LA Talk Live. Oh, your skin looks great. Thank you. What's your secret? 
Frankincense and Myrrh Oil by Ancient Essence. Frankincense and Myrrh Oil by Ancient Essence? Yes, it's a beauty secret used since the time of the Greeks and Romans. The Spawn Malibu told me about Frankincense and Myrrh by Ancient Essence, and now my skin is lovely. Well, your skin looks great. Call Ancient Essence at 1-800-627-9813. Discover the secret of beautiful skin. Call 1-800-627-9813. Discover the secret. Frankincense and myrrh oil by Ancient Essence. Discover the secret of beautiful skin. Available at fine spas and beauty centers. Hey, this is Richie Carr, General Manager for LA Talk Live and host of the New Entrepreneurs Weekly Summit. I wanted to take a moment out to welcome one of my newest sponsors, and that is Sensational Soaps. Sensational Soaps are handmade with all natural ingredients, with absolutely no preservatives, no harsh chemicals, and of course, no animal testing. Your body will look and feel silky, smooth, moisturized, and completely revived. Do you suffer from dry, ashy skin? Then layer your skin with their luxurious blend of oils and shea butters specially formulated to revive dry, dull skin. Sensational Soaps also offers a full line of bath and body products, including luxurious bath salts and body scrubs, massage oils and lip balms, even romantic gift sets and custom gift baskets for your lover or significant other. For more information or to place an order, visit them at www.sensationalsoaps.biz. That's www.sensationalsoaps.biz. Sensational Soaps. Pamper yourself and indulge your senses. Sensationalsoaps.biz. Proud sponsors of LA Talk Live and the new Entrepreneurs Weekly Summit. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to The Book Beat. I'm Jean Noel Bassior, and my guest this segment is Marcy Javriel, and she is a vitality expert, and you were a professional dancer, right? That's right. right? Grew up in the Christian science world and musical comedy. You've taught. You've been on the faculty of 12 massage schools, which is very impressive. Thank you. <laughs> and, um, gosh, you've done so much, 30 years of affiliations with health health professionals and doctors and I know you've worked closely with a lot of doctors right to help people tune into alternative ways or complementary ways to restore their health and vitality absolutely so you have finally gathered all of this knowledge <laughs> I can't believe you've done this because I know part of your journey and I know Marcy has done an amazing thing because she has so much knowledge and you put it together in this wonderful new book. Hold it mm -hmm. up. Oh, yes. Well, this is the PDF because actually it's now on Amazon Kindle. <laughs> At last. It's on Kindle. All the way up here. Right. So now it's on Amazon Kindle. But um, right now I have some of these copies, these PDF copies, which are pretty bulky, but they I call them my coloring book because they're full of illustrations. Well, it's bulky, but you did an interesting thing. You 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 did it with a spiral bound. You know, this is easy with, you know, an, a book you're referring to for exercises and treatments and things is easy to work with when it's spiral bound. Yes. Yeah, so that was a good move. And they can get it um, from your website as well, download the yes. PDF. Yes. Okay. So my uh, website is vitalityexperience.com. So let's talk about your work as a vitality expert and now you had a great question on your website which I like which is this are you secretly wondering if your health will hold out as long as your dreams yes aren't we all wondering that? aren't we wondering <laughs> I wondered too and actually now at age 62 I can't believe it I uh, it turns out that all the things I did for myself have really helped me look the way I do now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what I thought would be a very important thing to do is to share all those things now. 
So it pays off because, you know, you don't want to be 62 and looking like you're 82 or, or be, or be, you know, which some people do. So, so be, be limited in your movement or yes. your vitality, right? Absolutely. So, and detox was an important part of this, right? Of That's this, right. Okay. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about what can people do at any age if they're going to start now? to get their vitality back, to preserve their vitality, to start to heal themselves? I mean, this is a broad question, but give us some of your basic best Yes, tips. the basic best, which is in Chapter 7, and I call them my sparkle activities. I love it. And why sparkle? Why? Because I don't think that detox should be a chore. Detox should be fun. You should have all the fun you can have. Why not do things with simple things like this cute little vibrator guy? He's so cute. Isn't he cute? Yeah. Now, not only can he help you with your a headache, you know, on your head or in the back of your neck or your tummy or your legs or your low back. I, I used to carry this on the airplane before hygiene was a problem mm -hmm. and uh, give it to all the little kids, you know, mm -hmm. for them to play with because it's it's important to know that your detox can be fun. Mm -hmm. This is the way you're going to fit it into your life. You're not going to sit down and do a task like, okay, today I've got to do five minutes of detox. That's why I call them sparkle activities. I have seven of them. Stress release, melting massage, twist and shout, nourish from nature, sweat and scrub, rinse and scrape, and bounce upside down. Now, there's seven, so if you do mm -hmm. one every day, mm -hmm you will increase your circulation. And this is very important. I have focused on the fluid body. The reason I focused on the fluid body is during my 20s, I was very toxic. Yeah, you talk about your toxic I 20s. I did. I did everything we could have done in the didn't 70s. All, yeah, didn't we all have our toxic 20s? I, I had those, but then when I got to my 30s, I thought, well, maybe I would like to last a little longer, mm -hmm. like my dreams. I would like to mm -hmm. health my health to last as long as my dreams. So I started doing little things day by day that led to me devising this list for you that increased your circulation on a really easy way. You don't have to spend a lot of money. This is one of the main things I teach people is dry skin brushing because dry skin brushing will raise the hairs on your arm, but not only that, that will increase the fluid in your body. Really? And if you increase the fluid movement in your body, mm -hmm. that's going to increase your waist elimination, your blood. Now, is that the lymphatic system? Yes. Actually, the lymphatic system is like the blood, except it's parallel. It's a little more invisible. Yeah, I think we don't really understand the lymphatic system. We don't understand yeah. the fluid body. Even though we're 85% water, right. we are a body of water. You can treat your body like a body of water. If you remember that if you're a fishbowl, where does the sediment go? At the bottom of the fishbowl. Hmm. So those of us who are sitting down and are sedentary, where do all our toxic debris end up? Down in the mm -hmm. tush. Mm -hmm. And for guys, that means the prostate. Mm -hmm. And for women, that means the reproductive organs as well. And so many times, the first place I teach people to work is their belly. Now, I'm going to kick back a little and show you what I call uh, fake belly dancing. So hang on while I do this. And what does that do when and you so, do that? Um, what that does, and actually I have a little song that goes with it. Move it to the left and move it to the right. Move it up the ascending and down the descending. Around, around. It's a clockwise all around. Now that's fun, right? <laughs> and so why make it be a chore mm -hmm. to uh, lose weight? We need to get rid of toxic debris. And where is the main garbage disposal for the body in the colon? So that's almost like your own kind of colonic, uh, right, massage or Well, therapy. yes, absolutely. And what I advocate is not to have to spend a lot of money or go do a lot of treatments. It's all about self-help methods that you can sprinkle into your daily life that will help increase the possibility for you not to get a disease, so you don't have to go to the doctor, so you don't have to go to the colon therapist, mm. although that would be a good idea too. Right. But that only took like, how many minutes a day would you do that? Well, if you have uh, 
your belly moving and your colon moving, you should have three bowel movements a day. Mm -hmm. So if that's happening, great. But if it's not... But I mean, how many minutes would you spend in that dance? So that's the thing about the sparkle activities. I don't have a formula. Mm -hmm. That makes it more fun. But it looked like just a couple of minutes would do it, That's correct, yes. What you want to do is reestablish the primordial rhythm of the fluid body. And that moves slower than uh, let's go let's go let's go let's go cardio cardio and what I teach is to get back into that primordial rhythm the liquid the fluid movement and that starts to wash everything in your body your internal shower which is the lymphatic system needs to be moved through the lymph nodes by squeezing and relaxing and squeezing relaxing all the muscles in your body so when you're sedentary the lymph isn't moving now I think there's though a lot of confusion about when you say lymphatic system and I'm thinking like is this like uh, the fluids the other fluids besides blood in yes body? yes actually it but is. it's not like obviously a circulatory system yes but it is oh yes it so, is a circulatory system so what happens is the blood has plasma that leaches out of it into the tissue at the capillary level and that is plasma without the red blood cells and that turns into the lymphatic fluid and that travels and that travels through muscle contraction out to clean all the cells of your body Mm -hmm. so now it has to come back to the blood as plasma but as it's coming back to the blood it's called a lymphatic obligatory load and so that load has all the toxins, all the debris, all the little bugs that you had, all the excess proteins and sugars and and all the things that are disease prone are coming through that lymphatic system to get sent out your six elimination waste uh, waste elimination pathways, right? There's six. Mm-hmm. Which are? Defecation, urination, respiration, expectoration, exfoliation, and perspiration. I see. So then it's really important that those toxins that are in the lymph get released, right? Yes. And so what we want to do is increase the lymphatic uptake at the nodes. And we do that by pretending we're a muscle with the lymph node. So we just press on the lymph node and relax and press and relax. And it's it's a slow kind of lullaby waltz rhythm. And it's very sleepifying. So you find your lymph nodes and you do this, right? Yes, you have 600 lymph nodes all over your body, but I call them uh, the the main water filtration stations are around the neck and the armpits and the groin and behind the knees. And those water filtration stations are working very hard to bring that fluid that's full of debris up to the waste elimination pathways, to the kidney, to the colon, to the bladder, to the lungs. To the skin. The skin is the greatest elimination organ. So if we're kind of massaging our lymph nodes, we're going to be helping along or quickening this process. Everything, right? yes. To, to get the toxins to the nearest kind of exit point. That's right. right. Sending that- it everything to the exit. But the warning is there are contraindications for increased circulation. Fever is the main one. So once you have a fever that's the third barrier to disease the first barrier to disease is actually your skin Mm -hmm. the second barrier to disease are the lymph nodes so that's why 20 percent of the lymph nodes are in the face area that's why they get swollen when you have an and they swell because when you have an invasion your t cells know how to multiply themselves Mm -hmm. a thousand times in an eighth of a second Mm -hmm. and so the lymph nodes swell and then you feel that oh what's going on Mm -hmm. well the battle is taking place good Mm -hmm. but if the battle doesn't succeed then the body goes into a fever. So the fever means that not only did it get through the skin, but the lymph nodes aren't doing a good job of fighting with the T cells, so back off. So during, and in my book, I talk about this progression of disease. It's a bell curve, so right at the height of disease, if you're having a crisis like an asthma attack or you have um, a tooth decay, you cannot be doing extra increased circulation because it will spread that. Mm. Now, that being said, there was a time we we were told before cancer that um, it might spread the cancer, you know. So if there was a possibility there was cancer, don't do the massage. That's no longer the case. We've proven, it's a myth, 
that massage spreads cancer. It does not. It mm. helps the immune system. So the immune system and the lymphatic system are dependent on each other. The fluid of the lymph is carrying the immune components. So the warriors and the T cells, the B cells are all being carried along, transported by the fluid. This fluid, if it gets thick with protein and sugar and fat and debris and sedentary and it turns into sludge. So the lymph is supposed to be a little bit more like olive oil. Mm. And that way, when you massage yourself, if you're massaging very gently, the melting massage that I teach, the lymphaticus, over and over, gently, gently towards from the tips to the torso, because that's how everything has to flow. Now, that's a problem if you're standing up because gravity's fighting, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the main things we do in the sparkle activities is getting upside down and counteracting gravity. Mm -hmm. But some of these other things are all about the waste elimination system, mm -hmm. sweating and scrubbing your skin, rinsing your mouth, and also scraping your tongue, there's a lot of opportunistic disease that happens there. Mm -hmm. And in the dentist in the dentist chair, all the debris that comes down there, I have a lot of people after they see the dentist really need that lymphatic clearing. Mm. So I teach people really simple things in the book. Yeah. There's things where you can download or get a flashcard to teach yourself how to do your mm -hmm. own face massage, your own mm -hmm. chest and belly massage. Yeah, the book is full of graphics and pictures and uh, probably John Lowe's nightmare here <laughs> in terms of formatting. That's right. Oh, my goodness. Yes, it's 150 <laughs> illustrations, yeah. and many of them I did myself based on the work that I did with a surgeon. I worked on over 500 of her post-surgical patients, teaching them how to massage their scar so that it would soften, disappear, and get more harmonious to the surrounding mm -hmm. area and get rid of some of the fluid that's there, too. Yeah, you have a lot of things in your book like scar softening, um, you know, the lymphatic massage. These are things that we don't hear about a lot, and that's why this is um, such an amazing thing that you've done to gather all of this together. And I know how long it took you. And <laughs> 30 Mar years now. <laughs> Marcy, but actually, it, you know, when you actually, the process of doing the book, I watched Marcy hang in there through um, really figuring out this whole self-publishing thing and being hitting the wall so many times. But I am so happy because now I have vitalityexperience.com mm -hmm. and that is my new website that teaches everybody that they can be vital, they mm -hmm. can have good energy and self-healing is your ultimate vitality experience because these tools are your own human resources, your own hands, heart and mind are going to set you free and heal you and you don't need a, to spend a lot of money or time you just need to understand how your own body works so, and, so and about, amplify it so about how how many minutes um per day would you say i'd have to spend you know oh maybe five or ten minutes a day and really? as you as you start doing more and more of these activities they start to filter into your life so when you have a headache you scratch your head and maybe that's a three minute scratching my head for the gallbladder and getting my brain active again and and then if you feel a little stiff and stiff upper lip then you're going to maybe do some massage for your jaw you feel some swelling in your legs you're going to do a little massage on your ankles you feel uh, foggy in your brain you're going to do a little alternate nostril breathing you feel stressed out you're going to do some laughter yoga <laughs> So I'd like to actually conclude with laughter yoga, which is a great... Yeah, we great, have about just a minute here, so go, go for it. Great stress <laughs> reduction. Not only is meditation a great stress reduction, but sound is the most important thing to get rid of garbage in your body. Sound is your emotional way. So ha, ha, ho, 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 ha, laugh it out. Laugh your stress away. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marcy Javriel. Tell us again how to get in touch with you. Yes, come to my website, vitalityexperience.com. I also have a lot of free videos on my YouTube channel. And you'll see my book on my Amazon author page, Feel Like Yourself Again, How to Heal, Recover, and Be a Better Person. <laughs> 
feel better faster, stay stronger longer. <laughs> so if you want your health to last as long as your dreams, I feel like a commercial here. <laughs> But that is the most, that is a very important thing. So I think you're really on to something here. So thank, thank you. you. Um, next week, let me tell you about next week's show. And uh, my producer, Susan Levin, my wonderful producer, has lined up fabulous guests as usual. Um, our guest expert is Sylvia Carey, and she's a therapist. And she has written a book called The Therapist Writer, Helping Mental Health Professionals Get Published. So she specializes in helping you get published if you're a coach, a therapist, a hypnotherapist, um, any of that. And we have David uh, Rolander with us. He's written The CEO Code. He's going to share real-life stories of success and failure from his work as a mentor and coach to CEOs and executives of Fortune 500 companies, mid-sized companies and startups. And we have Reba Merrill is going to join us. She, sort of like me, has done celebrity interviews as during her career as a journalist, and she has a book uh, called um, Nearly Famous, Secrets, Lies, and Videotape, and it's um, a lot of inside Hollywood secrets that you can't wait to find out. You really need to know. So tune in next week with uh, for the book beat. I'm Jean Noel Bassior. This is latalklive.com where we are more than just talk. tuned into LA Talk Live. We're more than just talk. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned.